Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new video and today we are going to be recreating Thomas Tuchel's 3-4-3 tactic that he uses still to this day. We've got three teams to test it with, it's going to be a great tactic, it's a fun tactic to use, both defensively solid and great at scoring goals, so do check it out. You can find the tactic in the description with, with the Mediafire download link. Before we do get into the first save though guys, please do smash the like button on the video. Be sure to comment on what manager you want to see next. There are still some in the pipeline that I've got to do. I know I've had a few requests. And last but definitely not least, do subscribe to the channel. So the first team we actually tested with is going to be with Borussia Dortmund, obviously his former team. And we done very well with this team. Probably the weaker team that we tested with, um, to be honest, because we when I recreate a manager, we recreate the teams that he's managed in real life. Um, so this is probably the weakest team that we have actually tested it with. And it's still done fantastic. Obviously, winning the Bundesliga, winning the Champions League, winning the Pokal as well against Leverkusen. Um, 102 goals scored, so very good there. Only 17 conceded as well, so very impressive stats there. If we look into the squad just briefly... Um, we're sort of getting 27 goals out of Royce, 26 out of Marlon, 17 for Hazard, 15 for Bellingham, 11 for Ademi. And in terms of assists, we've got 36 coming from Guerrero, obviously, which is going to be our fullback. This guy is honestly ridiculous on this game. If you saw the Dortmund rebuild, if you haven't, do go over and check that out. This guy was doing really well in there too. 17 from Hazard. I'm Hazard, however you want to say it. 11 for Royce, 9 for Ademi. So one thing about this tactic, guys, is... The, the goals, the assists, everything does sort of balance itself out, I'm going to be honest. Um, I wouldn't, I mean, it's going to sound really contradicting because we did score a lot of goals, but it doesn't feel like it's a really attacking formation when you see it on paper. But in game, you create so many chances, so you are going to be scoring a lot of goals. And if we could go into the data hub, we can actually see a little bit about this. So, team attacking, goals per game sitting bang on three, so that's very impressive, especially considering a sort of... It looks a bit negative when it comes to the tactic page, but three goals a game is actually very good. Um, pass completion up there, very high, nearly 90%. Shots on target is going to be low, so I'm not telling them to create the perfect chance every time. But great pass completion, great amount, great amount of goals per game. And when it comes to the defending, it's even more impressive. At the end of the day, the win ratio, tackles win ratio is getting on for 80%. Lots of tackles. Conceded per game sitting at half a goal. So we're, we're scoring three and conceding half, basically none. I think if you round that up to one, that's three scores, one conceded. So that is why this tactic is so dominant. You are scoring a lot more than what you're going to concede. Um, it's not the most beautiful football you're going to be playing, I'm going to be honest. It's not ticky-tacker all the time. You do see spells like that where you do have good passing. But majority of the game is just going to be normal sort of football, not anything too elegant. But that is going to be Dortmund broken down. That is the first team we tested with, and what a season. Let's get in to the next test. Now, I can already see the comments of this one. I know you're expected to win the league with PSG. I understand that. But the reason why I included them in here is purely because he has managed them in the past. And I always like to include teams that the manager has previously managed, as that is a recurring pattern on this channel. But we absolutely dominated the French League. Pretty obvious. We also managed to win the Coupe de France, the Trophée de Champion and also the Champions League against Real Madrid. Now, that one is an accomplishment because it's something which PSG haven't been able to do. Um, so, to be honest, overall, that is a, well, it's a flawless season. Obviously, you're expecting it in France. The Champions League could have went to any of the top teams, but we've done very well in that as well. In the league, we scored 139 goals, which is absolutely outrageous. 10 goals conceded, so to be honest, hardly any conceded. Obviously, I'm not going to give myself as much credit in this one because the quality in this league isn't as good, but still, 10 goals out of 38 games is absolutely ridiculous. In terms of stats, there's going to be goals everywhere. You've got 49 for Messi, 47 for Mbappe, 31 for Neymar, 18 for Verratti from midfield, 15 for Icardi. Assists, you've got 39 for Messi, 27 for another fullback in Hakimi, 20 for Mbappe, 20 for Nuno Mendes, um, and 10 for Verratti. So, again, the stats um, in terms of goals and assists spread amongst a variety of players, even the players going down here and down here for goals. Everyone does chip in and get involved, which is very key in a football manager um, tactic, in my opinion. Going over to the data hub then, team attacking. Yeah, it's going to be brutal. Um, pass completion is basically 90%. Again, 
Goals per game is sitting at 3.66, which is, again, is very high. Um, shots on target ratio is always going to be low because that that does always that, that is always quite low when you haven't got the work the ball into the box because then that is when it will go up because you are going to be creating then perfect chances over and over. In terms of defending, it's going to be ridiculously low because, again, it's a mixture of this tactic being amazing and also this is the weakest league in terms of opposition that we've tested in. 0.2 goals a game is basically not... We're hardly conceded at all. Um, for fun, we are going to go on the schedule list and look at this because I guarantee it's going to look absolutely ridiculous. Um, tackle win ratio sitting at over 81% as well. But one thing I will say is, um, which is very impressive, yeah, I mean... Hang on. Yeah. We actually didn't lose an entire game the entire season. Now, I know a lot of this is going to be obviously in the league so it's not as an accomplishment but there's tough teams in here at the end of the day like Chelsea um who else to be playing here um Manchester City we drew against them then we beat them 6-1 um what team did they play that game Ireland Greenish and Abri Silva a very very good team and we were smashing them 6-1 um, um then Milan not a difficult one Barcelona in the semis and then Real Madrid in the final so we did actually play some tough teams and we didn't struggle against one of them so Overall, a very, very good test. And although the French League was a given, the Champions League isn't. So fair play to him because it is one hell of a tactic. Before we do get into the last test, which is going to be with his current team, Chelsea, please do leave a like on this video. It helps the channel grow. It's a great way to see that you're enjoying the videos. And please do subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Also, if you do want to stay in touch with these videos when I post, etc., etc., do follow the social medias that are going to be in the description. But let's get into the Chelsea save and see how we've done in England. So, as you know, the last team we've done is going to be with Chelsea. And again, it's quite dominant, I'm going to be honest. We actually managed to win the Premier League, which is very impressive. Win the FA Cup and also the Carabao Cup. We did unfortunately go out in the first knockout, which is a big disappointment against Leipzig. That's the only the only team or the only match which I've seen amongst this, all of this testing, which I am disappointed with. Villarreal are a tricky side and a sort of pre-season, so I'm not too bothered about that. Again, scoring 105 goals ranking as best. I think that's the best we've been all throughout. Not as, in, not as in the amount of goals scored, but I mean, we've ranked the best amongst all three saves, which is very impressive. Um... And also only conceded 19 goals, which is, again is very impressive. In terms of the squad then, we've got 44 goals coming out from Kai Havertz. We've got 33 for Mason Mount. Um, and Lukaku's actually on loan um, to Inter Milan, I believe. Um, what did he... He's back now. He's back now, but he is on, he is on loan at Inter Milan. He is back now, though. Um, but yeah, so Lukaku um, scored 28 goals for Inter Milan. Um, 19 goals coming in for Raheem Sterling. We've got 13 coming in for Pulisic, 12 for Kovacic, and 11 for hudson Adoy. In terms of assists, we've got 31 for Mount. We've got 21 for Reese James, 18 for Aspen Equator, 17 for Kai, um, 15 coming in from Pulisic, 9 for Sterling. Sterling having himself quite a Sterling first season, quite a good season there indeed. 8 for N'Golo Kante and 7 for Ziyech. So, again, the stats are very well balanced. And that's what I try. It's what I like anyway. When a manager doesn't rely purely on one player, it's always going to be a good thing because a player can instantly lose confidence, can get injured at the end of the day, and it's not a reliable way to play. In terms of stats then, so team attacking, we're going to be slightly less, but then it is a tougher league, better defences in this league. Still averaging 2.7 goals a game, which is very impressive there. Pass completion always being good, sitting at around 90% or 89% if you're going to round it down. Team defending, again, in the Premier League, this is honestly fantastic. 0.5 goals a game, so technically it would be it would be a goal a game if you were to round up, but by the stats, it's under a goal a game, and the tackle win ratio is bang on 80%, which I've never seen that um, as in an exact figure. So very weird, but very good stat to see. Um Definitely in this league as well, because the Premier League has some great um, attacks. Obviously, Manchester City, Liverpool, Spurs, Manchester United. The list can go on and on and on. And we're, we're conceding less than a goal a game, if not one goal a game. So very, very impressive there. But the one thing we haven't done so far is go into a game and watch some 2D gameplay. So let's do that. I'm going to pick out a game towards the end of the season, and I'll get back to you once I've picked out a game. So I've picked out a 3-0 win against Manchester City in what was the FA Cup final. So a big fixture, 
a tough fixture and a very comfortable win from us as well. But what we're going to do, as we always do, is talk a little bit how this system plays purely by looking at a 2D sort of print. So obviously you're going to have your left back here, which is Aspel Equator. You're going to have your right back, which is Dan James. And you've got Koulibaly, um, Chaba, Chabala and Thiago Silva. And then Mount and also Kante in there. Now, this this system works very well with Tuchel because the fullbacks are very progressive fullbacks. And what sort of happens is they're... <laughs> I'm going to try and do it. I don't know if I press play, if it's going to, they're going to start going out of position. They kind of are. So let's just rerun that back. So the beautiful thing about this is that the midfield players do sort of drop back and get into pockets of space. So when when these right or when this fullback does eventually go up the pitch, he will sort of be about here. But then what you'll see is, so if you imagine Reese James up here, what you'll see is that this um, right side of centre back will slightly push over. And then this guy here, which is Kante, We'll get into a little area of space here, which will sort of give a triangle between Kante, James, and also Koulibaly. So there's always a passing option on. It's not a Tiki Taka system, but it does sort of work out like that in some aspects of the game. Um, it's very similar to sometimes like a Conte, to be honest with you. And the same happens on the left-hand side. In terms of going forward, what you'll see is a player, especially, where is he? um he's going to be midfield for this game but a player like mason mount who typically i would actually play on the left hand side will come in and actually link into the play as well so you will see um mount especially um does it very well in real life he gets in you know in between the pockets he gets into the space and he creates stuff constantly all the time and it is a joy to watch and like i said it's definitely not a possession-based tactic so i'm not going to advertise it as that um but it's also it's not a direct route one counter attack either there is room for possessional play in this system and you will see it a lot so let's get into some of the key highlights and hopefully we can sort of see it in the action so it's going to be manchester city with an attack first and just like that we're going to talk about it right off the bat there's not there is a bit of pressing in this system and as you can see there kula barley is actually quite far up the pitch, which is fine because even if he wasn't to win that battle there, we've still got Mount who's still in midfield and also Kante. Mount's actually Mark and Bonalo Silva there, man for man. But even at the back, we're not exposed. We've obviously got Reese James, we've got Chabala, we've got Thiago Silva, and that is where the back five works so well because you can afford for one centre back to push up and you still have a back four. So that is a beauty of the five at the back. Kudabali actually drives there with Kai Havertz into Pulisic, into Kante, and unfortunately, it does go into the, into the hands of Muric. But if you see how quickly that attack forms, it's honestly deadly. It really is. Um, no goals were from set pieces as well. So luckily, they're all going to be from set play, which is which is good, you know. Um, a ball goes up there from Jones. I don't even know what's a highlight. Here we go. So then have a throw in. Mares is on the ball, goes into Aurea, a very weird sign in there, into John Stones. But look at this. We're also, we're holding our shape without pressing too much and getting caught out. So we've still got our back five intact here. Stones is actually forced to go back. It's number 10 here, which is going to be Pulisic. He's going to be applying the press. And it goes into Ruben Diaz. Again, there's not a ridiculous amount of options for him. Dybala as well. Wow. Um, but we'll, hopefully they get a wide here because I want to show you. Unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but as you can see there, Pulisic does sort of drift across and win the ball back. But what I was trying to show you is if De Bruyne was to go to this area here and get the ball in, we still had four in the box to defend the, um, the ball coming in. So you very rarely exposed. You, you genuinely are very rarely exposed. Sterling on the counter attack here, plays it into Kante, into Reese James. Again, options upon options. Sterling staying slightly narrower to allow Reese James to go out on the outside. Sterling across. He actually has a bit of a howler of a shot here. In fact, what I'm going to do is we're going to change this to the goals. So I want to show you a little bit of the um how the goals build up more than anything. So Sterling actually picks the ball up quite narrow here. And although you're going to be seeing number nine and also number 17 in a way, this is exactly what I was on about when I was on about the little triangles. You've got Koulibaly, Kante and Sterling form the little triangle. So now Sterling probably, if I was to imagine, is going to play to Reese James. It would be the easiest pass. But there's always an option in the triangle. You've got Koulibaly free here. And then chances are what would happen is number 17 would push into Koulibaly. Let's see what happens. So he does play to Reese James, but chances are number 17 would have pushed into Koulibaly. Koulibaly then could have offered his Chabala. And then this triangle over here is already formed. You've got Thiago Silva, you've got Aspel Equator, and you've got Pulisic in this case, um, which is very impressive. But what the midfielders do roam a little bit in the system as well. 
So you've actually got Kai Havertz, um, who obviously is a midfield player, getting into a very, very good area of space here. Reese James with the ball then. Is he going to whip it in? He does whip it in, and it's actually Havertz who gets into that pocket, and I'm so glad it's him that gets the goal, because it shows that when you allow midfield players to drift off a little bit, that is what you get. You get lethal runs into the box, which can't be defenders. And from that, we get a goal with Kai Havertz. So it is a very crucial part of this tactic. Moving on then. So we've got Mason Mount again with the ball. Going to play it to Aspel Equator. Is he going to get the ball in? He does a direct ball. And again, Sterling in absolutely acres of space. Again, giving him that freedom is exactly what makes this tactic so good. And then the last goal is going to come from Chabala into Kante into Havertz, ball beautifully through into Sterling. And that ball from Havertz was absolutely incredible. And it was a game which we did deserve to win. Did deserve, did deserve to win, sorry. And like I said, I hope that's given you a little bit of a breakdown. Like I said, if you guys would rather see this in an actual game, like I can get some pictures off Google, we can actually break down how it works. But I like to show you in Football Manager because simply because of this, we can rewind different segments of the game. And like I said, especially this bit at the start, it's very easy to show you exactly how it lines up and things like that but if you guys would rather see real life content then that is something which we can definitely do but let's get into the big part of the video which i know is your favorite part it's going to be the tactic breakdown and also the player roles this is going to be the tactic broken down for you guys before we do get into it though please do smash a like on this video for this tactic the tactics is coming out at quite a good rate now i spend a lot of time making them and it doesn't mean a lot when you leave a like on the video but let's get into the tactic then so Let's go into the mentality. The mentality is going to be, first off, this is where the 3-4-3 three, three is. Obviously, you've got your 3 here, you've got your 4 here, and then your 3 there. Some people would see this as a 5, but it is actually a 3-4-3. Three, three. But mentality is going to be on attacking. In possession, we've got a fairly narrow pass into space, play out of defense, higher tempo, mixed crosses, and that is it. That's all you need selected for that phase of the game. In transition, we've got counter press and counter attack. Distribute to centre-backs is selected and take short goal kicks. Out of possession, very basic again. We have got force opposition outside. The offside trap is not selected. Prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Trigger presses on much more often. Get stuck in. Standard defensive line and a higher line of engagement. I did test it um, because Tuchel does traditionally sometimes, I've noticed it, go with a higher line. But on this game in particular, feel free to try it. But standard does work a lot better. Going into the player roles then, we've got the sweeper keeper is going to be on support. Nothing special for him at all, so we're not even going to talk about it. It's very basic, very straightforward. Moving on to the right-hand side, with your centre-backs, the ones on the outside, you want them on wide because that is where you see them triangles develop. Um, so you want them on the defend duty, you want them on stay wider, balance trigger press and shorter passing. The left-hand side is going to be exactly the same, stay wider, shorter passing and balanced on the trigger press. For the center of the center, we are going to have a ball playing defender. And with this guy, he doesn't need to be wide as well because that would be a bit overkill. And that is where you would get caught out. Balanced on the trigger press and also shorter passing. But with this guy, let him dribble more. Let him be a little bit more expressive on the ball. Going to the left back then, which is going to be a wing back on the automatic. Automatic means basically he'll go up, he'll get back, he'll do a bit of both. Which is exactly what you want in this system. We've got balanced on the trigger press, get further forward selected, run wide with the ball, shorter passing, dribble more, and if he is forced to cross it, get it into the centre. On the right-hand side is exactly the same. We've got trigger press on balance, get further forward, run wide with the ball, dribble more, and also shorter passing, and if he is forced, whack it in the centre. Obviously, this tactic isn't surely, you know, lump it into the box and hope, but it's not... It's not ticky tacker, as you can see here. It's not ticky tacker. It's standard on the passing. So you will eventually see a long ball, but it's also not going to be pure long ball. Moving on to the two in midfield. The most important player in the team by a mile is this box to box. Obviously, it's, it's Kante's role in real life. Trigger presses on less often. Tackle harder. Move into channels, because that is where you see them develop in triangles again. I keep saying triangles, but it is, it is a crucial part of this. And standard with the pass and directness. On the centre mid, we've got him on an automatic roll. That way he'll get up, but he'll also get back down. We've got him on balance, trigger press, ease off tackles, move into channels, roam from position, and also standard on the pass and directness. Moving on to the front three then. We have got two inside forwards on the support roll. 
we've got them on less often on the trigger press, get further forward, sit narrower, roam from position, cut inside with the ball, standard on the pass and directness, and that is going to be it for the left-hand side. The right-hand side is exactly the same. It worked very well having them replicated, so we had less often, sit narrower, get further forward, roam from position, cut inside, standard on the parson as well and having these both replicated i did test it changing a few things here and there but honestly having them both on the same worked so so well that's why i kept it and then moving on to the big man the deep lion forward on the attack is going to be on less often hold up the ball um just i always say this whenever you see this on a striker it doesn't mean he's not going to score he's still going to bag a load of goals do not let it put you off and also standard on the directness but that is going to be the tactic broken down, guys, from literally from nothing to something. That is going to be the tactic. Again, if you guys do want to download this, download it from the description. Click this little arrow here, go to load, and that will take you to your computer files. Find it in your downloads, whack it in. This will translate over the player roles, the tactic, absolutely everything. And from there, you can tweak it or you can rock with the exact same tactic. That is going to be it for today, guys. If you have enjoyed the video, please do leave a like on this video. Be sure to comment what team you're going to test this with. And please do subscribe to the channel. We're absolutely killing it at the moment. The channel is growing at a rapid rate, way beyond what I thought. But yeah, that is going to be it for today, guys. And I'll see you in the next one.